Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking you around ZSL London Zoo. Oh my god, it's been quite a while since we've been here mm. so I'm really excited to see if there's any changes and of course see the animals. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves a map. There yeah, you go. Yeah, a map. Do you want a map? Primrose, do you want a map? So as you first come in, there's a security point you go through to check your bags, we'll throw a security protector, there's some excited kids in the background. Yes. Um, you come through, you have your ticket scanned, and then there are some photo opportunities straight away with a gorilla statue, and then you're in the zoo. Um, we haven't decided quite what way we're going to go around yet, um, but we'll let you know when we get to our first animal. Okay, so when you first come to the zoo and you've got that little photo opportunity, there are a couple of different directions in which you can go. There's one where you can go straight to the reptile house, which is pretty much uh, directly opposite the entrance, or you can go fully to the right and under the tunnel to the other side, which is what we're going to do last today. So we are now going to the left, which is takes you round the background to where the penguin beach is. Now this is one of the biggest penguin beaches, isn't it? And it's yeah. an beautiful enclosure. Yeah, it is amazing here and um, Tony had a sensible choice to go this way first because the penguin enclosure is right by the biggest restaurant here so just after lunch it gets really busy with a lot of people. Penguins are Tony's favourite animal. Of course. Yep. <laughs> um, so we want to go there first when it's nice and quiet so we can spend some time looking at them and not have too many people around. So they are building a new reptile house. When I say building, it's behind us there. It is built, but there is a sign on it saying, um, slowly does it, our building is finished, but our animals need some more time to settle into their comfy home. So we don't know if the other reptile house will be open because no. um, they built this new one, which we know is replacing it because the other one was quite, it's very, very old. I mean, it was used in the Harry Potter films. It's been here for a long time. So the building was sort of going past its useful state. And that's why they got rid of the aquarium as well. Yeah. And when we take you over there, you'll see it's got lovely, beautiful drawings that artists have done on there. Yeah, well. the, the aquarium here was cool. I think it had the largest selection of animals or something. It had some stats of a world record um, at the aquarium, but unfortunately that has gone now. Again, because the building was so old, it was just hard for them to maintain it. Um, but this in the background here is the main restaurant and cafe, which we'll be coming back to for lunch. And the penguins are just over here at Christmas. This is where you come to see Father Christmas. And there's lots of little pop-up stalls around here as well. Um, and you've got the giants of the Galapagos, which we're gonna to go to after the penguins. Let's go see some penguins. So that is the shop. That is one of the tunnels to the other side of the road, but that appears to be shut at the moment. We're going into Penguin Beach here. It's worth noting as well, just to the right hand side, there is a free refill station for your water bottle. So if you bring a water bottle, you can fill it up. We're going to Penguin Beach. Sponsored by the Penguin Bar, one of Prim's favorite chocolate bars. It is a good chocolate bar. And Finn's, because he likes the jokes. Yeah, so really Penguin Bars, for those who aren't in the UK, they all have a joke on the back of them. <laughs> but this is Penguin Beach. So you've got this area here, and then it goes further down there, and we'll show you all of it around here. So this is a huge enclosure for them here. They've got all their homes over the back. This is the other side. There's a big deep pool there that we'll go to in a sec. Got a penguin on the rock. As you go around, you've got base camp over there. That's where they show you when the hatchlings are out. They show you some of the eggs and things like that. So I'm doing a penguin experience over the back as well. This is such a large enclosure they have here. It's awesome. Do you like them, Fim? Don't feed them donuts. <laughs> But you can feed them other Imagine. things. No, don't feed them things. <laughs> it's got a picture of a donut. I love that. That's good they've put this up because there were so many people before that yeah, would try and put their hands down. People put their hands down and stroke them. Which you're not and doing. penguins peck. They do. And then they've got an underwater viewing bubble, which is really cool. It's cool in there, is it? Can you see any? No, you can't see any. Keep looking, keep trying. And there's one here just chilling next to the water. Oh, he's coming closer. Got a lover penguin. These are Humboldt penguins. I believe they do also sometimes have some rock hoppers here as well. I see one! I see one at the very bottom! Wow! I see <laughs> I swear one just had a bubble on its head. 
that they're using the current to swim against yeah. it almost? A bit of training. <laughs> the swimming in the bubbles. Are you are a guy for the day. Hey. Hello. Got some gloves? So that was fun. Oh, I love All it. All the penguins swimming so around. Cute. And we'll probably come back here later because they are awesome, everyone loves it. And we're now going to go to the Galapagos area, so there's some Galapagos tortoises, which are huge! Um, they're inside, it's in like a heated solar area, so it gets quite warm in there, so we'll have to take our hats and coats off. Um, yeah, let's go to the next bit. There's a cool new sign here as well that we're going to quickly show and have some pictures in front of a ZSL sign, which is nice. So this is the new ZSL sign. Really cool, London Zoo. Into the giant of Galapagos. This is relatively new, maybe in the last sort of three, four years. But this opened. We're going to go in here now. As I say, it's warm inside, and you can smell the popcorn from that popcorn stand over there. I might have to get some of that. But we're going to go in here now. Mm. Starts with the egg. That's the size of an egg. For reference, my hand. It is a small egg for how big these turtles are, towards this way. Is it the worst thing you've said, turtle? <laughs> shame, shame. It's a cool enclosure. Because you come from outside in the cold to inside in the hot, everything's steamed up. So I had to clear the camera lens. <laughs> One of them's having a good old mud bath. Let's see if you can see that in the background. Stop right in there. Look They've got a that. big pile of mud over there. It's good for the skin. Yeah, and it's a really cool enclosure the there. I mean, look at this. Finn found the poo. So they're the gardeners of the Galapagos. So adult giant tortoises do important jobs. Because they munch up so much stuff, they spread the seeds across. And that is their poo. So it's amazing in there, I love those giant tortoises, it's three females as well. And we're now walking around to the butterfly enclosure. So this is a free flying butterfly enclosure, so if you don't like things flying around you, don't come in here. But we're going to go in here now. Oh, hang on, there's a little sign here telling you what's open and shut today, so let's see what's closed. The old reptile house is closed, and the new reptile house is coming soon, so we won't see any reptiles today. What but we'll absolutely do, everything else is open, so we're going to go and see everything. What we will definitely do is when that is open, we will get here as soon as possible, yeah. so we can just do like a short video. Yeah, we'll come and do an update video of the new reptile house, because that'd be fun. I'm just going to spin around and show you this ball, because it's really, really useful to see. It's next to the Galapagos turtles. So as you can see, it lets you know what is open, what is closed today. Everything is open by those reptile houses. We're now going over here to the butterfly house. This is where we came out from the penguins, so it's just up here. So this is butterfly paradise. Pre-warning, it gets hot in here. That's why Primrose has taken her coat off. She also wants a butterfly to land on her flowery dress. The camera might steam up again as we come in here because it is hot and humid. The trim has got a butterfly guide, so she can try and see what she's finding. That is called a postman. <laughs> the quality of the video has probably dropped a little bit, but it keeps fogging up, so you're looking through fog. We'll try and show you some things up close. The fin has sat on the bench and so has Prim, hoping that a butterfly lands on them if you stay really still you have a chance that one will land on you. And they are everywhere. And they are beautiful. I mean, look at this. Drinking the nectar from the plant. And then for context, you can see Prim is here for size. Ooh, there's butterflies fly around everywhere. Look at the size of this guy. He's absolutely huge. Also some feeding on orange and banana. Proper cool. And then as you come around the back, you can go and see the puparium where they're all hatching. So this is the puparium where you've got all the cocoons, you see them hatching. So at the back, they've got orange-tipped butterflies, common mormons, 
owl butterflies, and look at the owl butterflies. They are the big ones. Then there's large tree nymphs and brown clippers at the bottom. And then in this one here, it is the death's head hawk moth. That's how big that cocoons are. And they're in the tree over here as well. You can see the size of these. Absolutely massive. Good? Yeah. He said it feels refreshing coming back out. Yeah, it's so hot in there, isn't it? But it's nice. Yeah. I like it. I think it's really therapeutic being in that room and just looking at the butterflies. They've yeah. got like little sounds, like chime bells. Kids being kids on the bench. So Prim just wants a quick snack. Then we're going to walk past Land of the Lions, which we are going to, don't worry. And we're going to go to Tiny Giants. So this is the inside with the bugs and the spiders and some fish. Don't know if you can hear in the background. I don't have the microphones picking this up. I don't know if you guys can hear that. If you don't, I'll cut this out. But if you can hear that, that's the lion in the background, the male lion. Um, obviously, he is hungry. But we're going to go to Tiny Giants and show you around all the bugs. And you go in with the spiders. So this is part of the Land of the Lions and the entrance of Tiny Giants, Mini Beats and Coral Reefs. So the first thing when you come in here is ants. So the ants can go from all these different enclosures and follow the ropes as I'm walking along here. Really cool. And then they've got like mist being sprayed in there. It's amazing, but you can see them, they're leaf cutter ants, cutting the leaves, going all the way up over the ropes. And one got dropped. <laughs> the big sign here saying meet the tiny giants. It's mini beasts like insects, snails, crabs, and corals are all invertebrates, which means that animals without backbones, 97% of all known animals on Earth are invertebrates. And without them, we wouldn't survive. And then there's a nice little learning area in here and some seating. And the big locusts are in the back. And this is a locust enclosure. And there are so many in here. Who would eat them? What do we have at home? Toothless. Prim, who eats locusts? Toothless. Yeah, who's toothless? Imagine there's a hundred pet. Yes, our pet crested gecko. And he eats these for dinner. I mean, this is his more his size here. Yeah. What if there were? Yeah, the big ones will probably eat him for dinner. The big ones, yeah, are the size of him. And you come down here and you walk down. And there's some stick insects down here, if uh, my memory serves me correctly. And the giant stick insect, Prim, can you see them in here? Right. You can't see them, you have to look really carefully because they look like sticks. Where are they? Ooh, there's one in the background there, he looks like a stick. Just there. Oh yeah, right in the back. Okay. So well, this he looks like stick bit here going then. across. Right, is the let stick me insect. see if I can find one closer to you. These are golden weaver ants. And there are so many. No, I can see ants. Prim can see them. Whoa, there are so many. <laughs> right, so sorry for the reflections. So many. Glasses a bit steamed up, but there are so many ants in there. Then in here, there is millipedes. Oh, amazing. Look at them, look right by so your head. Cool. <gasps> Whoa. And again, it's a bit frosty, the glass, so you can't see that well. And then it's cockroaches. There's lots of other bugs here, we won't show you all the bugs, but we're going to go down and up with lots of them and see the aquarium. So Prim has found a special button that makes her dress glow in the dark. Wow, like a coral reef. Because what are we seeing next? The corals. Ready? As we go around this corner. Oh, I love this. this is one of my favourite parts. It is awesome. We are going into the reef. Wow. Absolutely stunning coral reef. It's so chilled out and relaxing when you're in front of that big aquarium and the coral. There's some coral you can sit on as well, real coral of course. 
um, and just chill out and relax and the sounds are all relaxing. We're now walking up back towards the entrance of this area because there's a spider walkthrough. <coughs> Apologies. So this is a pre-warning. If you do not like spiders and if you don't want to see the spiders, skip forward about three, four minutes because we're going to go in with the spiders in a second. When this was first made, I was like, oh my God, am I actually going to attempt going in here? I'm so glad I did because it sort of helped with my fear. Yeah. It's not completely open. This is in with the spiders. Oh, there's a big one. No, it's not real. It's a toy one in, in the bath. Where's the actual spider though? In this area, they have some spiders outside. Then there's actually a walk through. You walk through, there's an in and an out. You're going on the left and out on the right. And we'll take you guys in with us now. Now we're going in with the spiders. Black Widow, see. Black Widow in a little locked enclosure. As it says here, free range spiders are inside. You see? Ooh. Don't be scared. All up here. Whoa, look at this guy. This one's not free range, thankfully. <laughs> Because oh that is a bird eating spider. Why are you always hot in there? So most of the females are bigger, so they might actually. She might actually decide to eat the male up there. So we keep her, yeah, we keep her close at home and we make sure they're getting enough food. So she's just giving him a bit of a warning and then she'll go. That's mine. <laughs> Stay away from it, please. <laughs> See, the women are bigger. Yeah. I've got one of the biggest little breeders in the middle that you can see at the top. Look at that. You can go this way. Don't be scared. Promise. These guys won't come off of their webs. Look, it's eating. Oh my god, wow. I videoed this one. This is incredible. Oh my god, that's amazing. So hopefully fingers crossed by the end of it, most people do get a So this one is massive. It's there, there's a mirror behind it, you can take a spider selfie. But he's eating his food. They're all just being given food as we walk around in here. Um, lovely, lovely member of staff in here as well, giving people information. They actually do courses here if you're scared of spiders to help you to get over it. So that's a good thing. We'll spin around and show you the final parts in here. Prim is being really brave. Prim doesn't like spiders, but she's being super brave coming in here because they are everywhere. Um, so if you don't like spiders, do try and come in here because the staff are great and they will try and help you get over your fears. Right, so we are now, after doing that little mini beast adventure, going to the restaurant. We're gonna have some lunch and we'll show you what it's like. And there's lots of options. If I remember correctly, they do like wood-fired pizza, sausages and chips. Of course, sort of chips stuff. for the kids, because that's what yeah. they eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's salad options and things like that. But we'll share with you what options there are and show you what we get there as well. So this is the terrace restaurant, the little like cafe bit at the front shut at the moment. That's just for coffee. We're gonna go inside. It's called the terrace because it's got a big terrace outside, which obviously is nice in the summer. Though some people are braving it on today, which is a bit of a cold day. But we're gonna go in here now. This is the inside. There's upstairs, downstairs. The food's all over the back. I'll try and show you a little selection of what I've got. Tony's gonna go upstairs and find a table. So there's like cakes and things in the middle and pastries. You can get lots of options over here. So over here there is salad, seasonal salad. There's hot food, which is the mains, so kids. There's veggie burger and chips, mac and cheese, barbecue pork, pork, fish and chips. And they also do um, fish and chips and burgers and things. There's pizzas over here. So we've got two portions of chips, a children's salad, margarita pizza, a friend wanted an iced lolly, a couple of cokes and a beer. It came to £30 after we got some discount from our annual passes. This is the salad, it's like Caesar salad, and then on the other side is like broccoli and stuff, and it's really nice beetroot. And this is freshly made pizza. They're rolling them out as you order it, which is fantastic. And they're finished loving these chips. Yeah, really nice. Chips, as always, yeah. can of coke. <laughs> oh, I said I might get some popcorn. Oh, yeah. Some popcorn over the road, so nice. I might get that after. Right, we're going to eat. So, just while we're having lunch, I thought I'd share one of our tips for London Zoo. So, when you come here, if you are getting public transport, you go to Camden, and it's about a 15 minute walk, nice and easy. However, if you are driving, um, there's two places you can park. You can either park on the inner circle of Regent's Park, where you pay a pay and display machine. It's about £5.80 an hour, but you can only stay for a maximum of four hours. So that's okay if you're doing a quick visit, but if you want to spend the whole day like we do, they do have their own car park, but it is £17.50 for the day. But we advise parking in there, so you can spend the whole day here. So as we came in, we've just picked up our brand new gold passes. So super happy to have these again. We've had them for years. Haven't had them for about a year or two, so it's nice to have these back. 
Um, I'll pop up on the screen now the pricing of the different annual passes that you can get and the options. So as you can see uh, there, there are lots of different options. The gold passes give you discounts on things when you come in. So you get discounted car entry to Whitplay Zoo. You get discount in the shops and on coffees and on donuts that we're about to uh, wolf down. And the silver just gives you the entry, doesn't give you those discounts. There's also different things you can do, like become a patron of the zoo or a friend of the zoo as well. So I do have a look on the website for that. But we'll link below a link to get these passes. So we are now taking you guys into Land of the Lions. This is a really cool... Oh, got food brand mouth. Um, this is... Oh, lions! This is a really cool area that opened quite a while ago now. I mean, Finn must be quite young, maybe like eight, nine years ago. Back then, it and was the Queen, Her Majesty, back then, who opened it. Yes, and it's so colourful. I mean, some of the colours have faded a bit, but it's so bright and colourful in here. Can't wait to show you guys. So we're going in here now. The theme of this area is that you're going into the Gear National Park. Home of the last Asiatic lions in India. There's even a tuk-tuk that you can go in straight away. All the signposts are where to go. We go this way. Yeah, we go this way. There is a little food place here, although it's hardly ever open. But it sells like Indian street foods, so like poppadoms and chutneys and things, and onion barges. But yeah, we haven't seen it open in a long time. But when it is, God, you... It's really nice it when well. it is open, yeah. So there's lots of like, fun stuff around here. They've themed it as if you are in an Indian village. All the colours, the flags, tuk tuks and different little shops. And then this area under here is themed like it's a train station. So you're going in, um, there's bikes you can ride, see how fast you can go compared to an animal. Don't let Finn go on this. Last time, bless him, he went on for his birthday and he cycled so hard that it hit back on his shin. Yeah, <laughs> he was he, not happy. He's not very sporty. Um, <laughs> So it's around here, it's like you're in a train station, this is a train station platform, but it's actually a viewing platform into one of the line enclosures. So this is the first of the enclosures, just like the railway lines running through. You can see the female lion up on that stand, looking around at everything. So we just came up in the lift which is there, otherwise you come up down this side, but Tony's leg is still a bit bad, so we wanted to make it easier for them going up lots of stairs. But we're now upside, up, upside? That's not a word, is it? Um, we're now upstairs in the lion enclosure. I'm going to spin around and show you all the different areas they can go in. Well, they tend to always be in one, but we'll go and see them there. But I'll spin you around now. So this is one side of the enclosure, as you can see there, all that paths. And then go across to where Tony and Primrose are. And this is the other parts. So this is looking down. We were down just down here at that window a minute ago. And that's her up there, looking very alert. So you can't see him, you might be able to hear him. The man is just over the back over there. Let's go down. So that's always cool to hear that, and a bit terrifying as well. He's now going over to the back of the enclosure and lay down. So we're going to keep walking around and take you to the other side of this little area. Again, this area is so bright and so colourful. As you go down here, you've got all the flowers and the flags as well, which is awesome to see. Which way? Which Find out one in this turn, and you've got to turn it, and it, then the goats at the top are pulling a sign. There you go. And the sign bounces. Well done, Prim! And then we're going in here. What's in here? Is it mongoose? Is it porcupines? Coaties. Coaties. Uh, here's the coatie. Grim, where is it? Meerkats. Meerkats. I made a baby. That's a baby. That's a baby. Do the baby. Do the baby meerkat. Do the baby. Do the baby. They're the baby ones, are they? I think they're adult ones. Normally, there'd be one on top of this as a lookout, but they're not. They obviously feel calm and relaxed. That's good. And the whole night. So just next to the porcupines and meerkats there is a kids play area and also the peckish parrot cafe where you can grab an ice cream a snack a sandwich and a coffee so this is the old original penguin um, it is a listed structure i'll go and show you some more information about it in a minute if you've ever seen the film about a boy they come and look at the penguins in this penguin pool yes it's the luptkin penguin pool Many penguins bred in this enclosure. However, because the nest boxes were too close together for such territorial birds, chicks had to be removed and hand reared. That's a picture of what it used to be like. As you can see it there. Not the biggest if you compare it to the one we saw earlier. It's not very deep, not very big. And they've got no sand. 
So when we were members before, when Finn was sort of three or four, they used to hold special events in the zoos and they did like dinosaur days. And they did summers where Andy from Andy's Dinosaur Adventures, Andy Day, would be here doing shows. And um, we'll put a link down below because we actually managed to film that. I mean, it's before we had a YouTube channel. We filmed it on our phones and it is on our channel. So we'll put it down below for you to see that if you want to go and watch that if you like Andy. Great fun. Yeah. They've done it also in Whipsnade Zoo. Yeah. So they've done one here mm -hmm. in the little centre over there, but they've also done one. And the animatronic dinosaurs were incredible. We're now going into tiger territory. I love the little uplies. Look at this. So we're going into this area here. A little bit here, the tiger's den. We've come in here before when there was tiny, tiny tiger cubs. So this is one of the cubs we saw when they were tiny. I think they were days old when we came here. We haven't got a video of that, unfortunately. They're on here, the mum's normally in here as well. Just at the back in there. And then another one over the back. Let's see if we can see that around the other side. So this is the outdoor enclosure, it's huge, it keeps going. There's another bit over there of a pool as well, we'll try and show as much as we can. Yeah, these are people who have sponsored the tigers. You get a paw print with your name on the floor. It creates like a walkway around the area. Huge enclosure, so they're often out here. They go down into this back part, there's a big shaded area for us to watch them. And then I can actually see two more up on the posts down here, so we'll get a bit closer. So they are up there. Let's try and go around the other side and see them from there. Hopefully you guys can see that, zoomed in a bit on my phone. The two up there, they are two of the cubs that were born, one of the cubs is inside, and their mummy's there. That at least is what I think, if I am wrong, do correct me in the comments if you know more. Trimmer, Look at them up here. Can you and to get up here, they've got to climb up these trees as well, which is amazing. So there Absolutely is amazing. Over here, a little fun activity. You have to smell, see if you can understand what the smell of each of these mm. things are. What do you think it is, Prim? you got to work out which one is a tiger. Well, one that's like is lavender, aftershave. one is aftershave, and one's a tiger. Which one do you think is a tiger, Prim? One. You think three is a tiger? Finn, which one do you think is a tiger? One. One. And Mummy, what time one do you think is the tiger? Oh, two is the tiger. Mummy is correct. Yeah. Two is the tiger. That's, that's definitely aftershave. Primrose thinks a tiger smells of lavender, and Finn thinks they smell of aftershave. This is the rest of that incredible tiger enclosure. You can see they can walk all the way up from the background. They've got a bit up here they can lay. And they've got huge ponds that they can just swim in. Including a ball, we have seen them in here before. You can get some amazing photos if they are in this area. Given swinging around in here. Look, there he goes. This one, that's. So, fun little fuck about those gibbons. It says here, may the force be with you, because in 2017, ZSL helped identify a new species of gibbon and called it the Skywalker gibbon. So it's a Star Wars gibbon, which is cool, isn't it, Finn? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna head over to the Gorilla Enclosure next. This has a baby that is about two weeks old, which we haven't seen yet, so I'm really hoping we get a little snippet of that little baby. So we're now going into Gorilla Kingdom. This is really well done in here again, really well themed as you walk around. Whoa, you found some bamboo. Wonky bamboo. Whoa, it's wonky. Panda. Wait, here's a bamboo. Pandas eat it. Yeah, Prim, look how wonky that one is. There's some really wonky bamboo in there. Wait, I've got a good joke. What's the scariest plant in the forest? Oh, I don't know. What is the scariest plant in the forest? Bamboo. That was a good joke there from Finn. And Prim is pretending to be a panda and trying to eat the bamboo. <laughs> trying to eat it, which is quite worrying. Yeah, so we're now entering the gorilla habitat. So as we go through, the gorillas aren't in this bit, we're not walking in with the gorillas. We're going into that habitat, there's some sort of free roaming birds and things like that in here. And then, um, yeah, hopefully we get to see the two week old baby gorilla, because that will be absolutely amazing. So this is the first part of this enclosure, there's like birds flying around in here. Um, judging by the amount of people over there, the gorillas are going to be outside. This is the outside of the gorillas enclosure. You can just see them over the back, but we will zoom in a bit and see if we can show them a bit for you. See they've got bags that their food is in. Foraging through the bags to see what food they can find. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
Just facing the baby around over there. So I'm going climb up and they're grabbing the sacks from everywhere, searching for what's inside them. Along getting his food. He is so cool. Silverback. I think they're Western Lowland Coolers. So, this one here, she has the baby hanging to her front. So, we'll see if we can capture that for you. It's just hanging onto her front. Look how small it is. Look. So small. You can only just about see, but yeah, the baby is clinging on to her front. So we have got a glimpse of him or her, which is proper cute. This is their enclosure from the other side. Still some out, some have gone inside, but it was so cool to see the baby and also how big the dad was, wasn't it? It was awesome. Oh my God, it's huge. Sorry, I've probably got a blue tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're now gonna move from here and go to the other side of the road and go to, I think, our favorite part of the whole zoo. Right, so we're now walking under the tunnel to the other side of the road to go into our favourite part of the zoo. I'm going to spin it around now so you can see the tunnel and we'll take you into the rainforest and Africa. So this is one of the two tunnels that go underneath as we are going down to the other side of the road. This is the road we drove over to get here. That's the outer circle, sorry, the inner circle of Regent's Park. So as you come out the other side, you can go straight, which goes into the old aviary and a monkey enclosure. We're gonna come back and do that in a second. You can go left and go into Africa, or you can go right and go into the lemurs and the rainforest. And that's what we're doing. They briefly be able to see we're on the opposite side of the road to the entrance now. We're going in with the lemurs. We're now in with the lemurs. They can come all around here in the summer, they are everywhere in the winter, they tend to be huddled at the back. Did you They're outside? Yeah. Oh, whereabouts? Up there, up there. Oh. Oh. Are you going to jump on your head? No. No, one jumped on Auntie Annette's head once. <laughs> oh, do you remember that? <laughs> that was a whip's name. That was so funny. With his baby as well, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. She would just stand there. This one's really bugging me. We're now indoors, this is the indoor lemur area. Then we're gonna go into a nighttime area which where there's some eye eyes, which is one of Finn's favourites. So we're now going into the night. So it's very dark in here and very quiet because it is the rainforest at night. And we're gonna go in here in a second and see if we can see an eye eye. So we're going back out of this area now. Unfortunately, we didn't really see it too much, but there is a picture of one here if you wanna see what one looks like. It's an eye eye. Now an exit to nightlife and the rainforest. I love this area, it's one of my favourite parts of London Zoo. It is warm again, but when you go in, it the slots the sort of have the As you come in here, you've got all this bit up here, and then it is a rainforest. So you are now in a rainforest, so yeah, inside the bushes, there's a tamandua and a sloth. We'll try and zoom in a bit on phones to show you. And there's some people down here doing an experience. It's like you are in the rainforest. 
So that experience you just saw people doing down below, it's actually something we were fortunate enough to do when Finn was about three. Um, we came with a friend into the zoo, we got to go down there, hand feed the tamandurs and the uh, little uh, monkeys, I think they are emperor tamarinds, and um, we got to feed. That's really, really cool. Golden tamarinds, yeah. We might have some pictures, if we do, we'll put them up now. It was a while ago, I'm not sure if we do. But if we do, we'll try and insert them. But that was a really fun experience, getting to go into the rainforest. So cool, the mist they put in here, as there would be in the rainforest. It would be very moist and humid. And there is down the bottom, there's lots of things you have to look out for. So I don't know if you can see, down there, there is a tortoise. And there's normally some armadillos running around as well. So when we go down in the lift, we might see it. Are they not in here anymore? No, I don't think the armadillos are in oh, here anymore. Okay. But yeah, such a cool area and an amazing, amazing place to sit. You can spend hours in here just watching everything. It's really like being in a rainforest, which is incredible. It's a shame we didn't see our the sloth yeah. up close. Oh, yeah, we saw him in the end of the bush, didn't we? So, oh, yeah. no stuff up close, but on our next visit, we'll make sure we come back here because normally, yes. when you first walk in, they're just up there on the trees, aren't they? It's because we do it in the morning, that's why. True, so next time we have to come here first in the morning, and hopefully, the sloths will be right by the entrance. Right, Prim wants a break and a snack. Turn his knees hurting a little bit. Um, you know, it's only four weeks since her operation. So we are now walking to the Snowdon Aviary. So this used to be historically a, an aviary for birds. Um, it's, it's listed again, I believe, and they've redone it, redeveloped it to be called um, Monkey Valley. So me and Finn are gonna head over there now and share that with you. So that way is into Africa. We're gonna come back and meet Tony and Prim and go into there in a second. But me and Finn are going across here into the Lord and Lady Paul Forest Reserve. As you can see in the background, into that giant, what was Avery and is now a monkey enclosure. So I said this is called the Snowdon Avery. It was built in 1965. In the 60s, the zoo wanted to create a vast space for birds to fly with visitors could walk among them. That's why this was created. This is this incredible structure over here, but I said it's now been turned into this amazing monkey enclosure, isn't it, Finn? Yeah. Really, really cool. Really big and spacious. Yeah, big and spacious. And funny enough, you can actually walk along here. This is the canal, that way it goes to Camden. There's a public footpath along here, straight through the middle. This is a bridge that goes over to get to the other side of it. It's such a fascinating design structure. So when you come in, there's like a waiting system queues to make sure obviously the monkeys can't get out. Just have to wait and then we'll be going in here. Sometimes they jump on the railings, sometimes they jump on the walkway. Just stand back, give them a metre, they'll go. Yeah. Okay. Lights are green, which means we can go in. And then red to wait for the next bit. Just got to wait here. Are you excited, Finn? Mm -hmm. In we go. In with the monkeys in Monkey Valley. And they are Columbus monkeys in here. They can jump. They are free to roam, so you are in with them. I mean, this structure is just incredible. Right. Really, really cool. We're up quite high, you've got water down below. They've got free roam of the whole place. They can also go through these tunnels and go back into the house as well. So you can get a closer shot for you. There they are. Just chilling out, relaxing, watching the world go by. Really, really cool. Beautiful, beautiful animals. He's just standing right next to us. Of course he. Just chilling next to us. Is this a meter away? Yeah, you're a meter away. You're okay. Just stand still. There we go. Look at him go. So that's great. We've never seen them that close in here. Every time we've been in here, they've been right at the top, or they've been inside. So to have one come that close to us was really cool, wasn't it, Finn? You're just saying yeah. it's like really rare to happen. So much fun. So we're pleased of that. And um, we're about to go through the bit to get out. In you go. Thank you. <laughs> Finn, was that you? No. Nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's brilliant. Just as you leave, it makes fart noises and then just telling you about how they fart because of the food they're eating. And then there's lots of cool little bits around here where you can compare yourself to the size of a monkey, hear the noises they make and stuff like that. We're going to go back and meet Tony and Brim and go into Africa. So as the sign says, we're now going 
into Africa. So we're going to see some pygmy hippos, some giraffes, some ukapis, which are one of my favourites. But first up, pygmy hippos. So there is the pygmy hippos saying hi to each other through the fence. One on each side. And they've got a really cool indoor enclosure here. Like a, I think it's called a hippo sauna. It's like a hot bubbly pool inside I'll show you. These are pygmy hippos, which are small hippos. They're proper cute. I love that the male pygmy hippo is called Thug. He dislikes onions and he likes frizzy lettuce, having his teeth cleaned and wallowing in the sun. And there he is in all his glory. Fascinating animals to look like. They look like it's almost like oiled leather. Really cool. They look so ancient. I guess they are quite an ancient creature. And not the pygmy hippos, but full size hippos are one of the most dangerous animals in the world. And I believe they are the most dangerous animal in Africa, bar the mosquito. Obviously not the pygmy ones, but that's the full-size hippos. So up next is the giraffe enclosure, but by the looks of it, they are inside. So we'll show you them on the other side once we have gone past the other animals. So we're now at the African hunting dogs, and they are being fed. Dead leg. You can tell why he's not the skinny one, right? Mm. Right, well, um, hey, well, Vader. Good oh, boy, is Vader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I'm going to check if, um, check if Lucy got his bed. Actually, I'll save him, save him just in case, because if he hasn't got meds into him, we'll, um, we'll hold. These are the African hunting dogs, the most successful predators in the world with the highest success rate on a hunt because they hunt as a pack. Very fast, run long distances and work together. So that was incredible to see the hunting dogs being fed. We've never seen them being fed like that before. Interesting to know they throw the food over. Obviously I wouldn't want to go in the enclosure with a hunting dog. But incredible to see that they're one of our favourite animals. We're now going to go into the giraffes who are inside and show you them. Lots of giraffes butts on the wall as you go in. Let me go in here. It does smell of giraffes butts. Mm. There's the giraffe inside. <laughs> a long tongue to get some food out of the ball. Rose was saying, um, why does it have a ball? And I was explaining that this is like um, a way for them to work for their food. Yes. So it's a little bit of fun for yeah. them, isn't it? Enrichment. Enrichment, That's Enrichment, the yeah. word, enrichment for them. <laughs> so my mum's favourite animal is a giraffe, and we actually bought her an experience for London Zoo, so she got to come here and be a, a giraffe keeper. Um, for a couple of hours so you've got to clean them out feed them prepare that enrichment um, i haven't got videos of that but i have got a couple of photos which i'll put on screen now for you guys to see so they should be up there as you can see they're in the enclosure getting to uh, help and experience what it would be to be a giraffe keeper So we are back in the car. That was such a lovely day. Great being back at London Zoo after not being here for a little while. And great seeing all of the amazing animals. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. We know a lot of our watchers unfortunately aren't subscribed to the channel. We'll see you in the next video on our next day out. Bye.